a second. And so the thing is, you know, what I will be doing is I will be uploading these uh, lectures uh, on uh, on YouTube, so you can watch it over there. And uh, the second important thing is I will be passing the link of these lectures in Google Classroom, so you can access the link from there. So. So I hope you all are comfortable with uh, working with Google Classroom. Uh, so, so that is the that is the main workhorse for our uh, this particular course. So the links that I will be giving you will be passed on to the Google Classroom. From there, you can watch it on YouTube if you want to, you know, revise your content. Okay. So, so today uh, we'll start this new course here. So this is uh, C2 CT203 signals and systems. So what we'll be doing today is uh, we will be discussing the fundamentals of the signals and systems. So as the name suggests, the course is signals and systems. So let's discuss uh, the details of uh, what exactly we mean by you know signals and what exactly we mean by systems. So we will try to understand the basic concepts lying behind these signals and systems, and then we will proceed slowly and slowly, and uh, you know, and see where. Uh, f then we will proceed slowly and slowly from this. So let's uh, discuss signals first. So what is signal? A signal is basically any physical phenomena which actually conveys information. So it's a physical phenomena that conveys some information. So let us uh, let uh, we will see the examples of uh, these signals in our coming slides. But this is the typical definition that you will normally find in most of the books. And uh, what they say is a signal is any physical phenomena which conveys information so if there is no information in in that particular phenomena then it's a random uh, you know sequence and it doesn't contain any uh, you know information so it will be like you know it will not be a signal so it has to con convey some information that we will call as signals what is system system responds to signals actually it's a it's, it's a for, for you it's a black box but we will see what systems are but normally it, it, it's a it's a complete uh, you know a black box type of thing which actually takes input as a signal and it actually produces a new signal so it will generate some new signals which are actually important for you so it's something like this you know it's a black box like this you don't know what is inside here uh, and we don't want to uh, no also because in this particular scenario where we are studying signals and systems we are not actually focusing inside this black box but uh, you know what what what's the main role of this uh, particular black box is like you know it takes input as signal which you are actually feeding into it and it outputs a new signal which is relevant for you so we will see why you know why this new signal is relevant and in which application it is relevant so we will see in these coming slides so examples of signals first and then we will discuss the examples of systems later on so what are the typical examples of systems a typical example of system is shown over here as you can see here you know you are you are watching this particular uh, just a second this particular sequence if you see here is basically you know a adult male voice saying the word signal so he, what that person has to, uh, you know uttered a word which is signal and this signal when you plot it uh, on 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 this particular time axis what you will get is you will get something like this some sequence so it's a complete sequence not up to here but completely up to this side so this we are term uh, coining it the term as signal because it contains some useful information which you want to process and note that this particular example is in time domain what do you mean by that it means that you are actually plotting the uh, you know signal with respect to time and time is basically a independent variable and this particular case which i am showing you here is a case where you have one independent variable so as you can see here we have this time so this is the independent variable and what you are doing you are plotting signals on that so this is a uh, adult male voice saying signal and this is the thing and what you can see on the bottom is actually showing you the showing you the zoomed version of each individual signal so individual part of the signal for example this particular part if you see you if you zoom it you will get this signal and if you zoom this particular part 
what you are getting is this type of signal. So these are all different type of variations in this signal. So they are trying to show you what kind of variations is variations are there in within this signal uh, when the adult is saying this word signal. So this is very simple example of a signal in time domain. So next is uh, another type of signals I will show you here. So these are the different scenarios where you know you will find signals. So the first one is amplitude modulated carrier system in communication system. So I hope you must have studied uh, communication systems also and from, from, from there you can quickly realize that these are the amplitude modulation uh, signals which you will find in, con, uh, in, in, in communication systems. So these, these are also signals because it carries very useful information. Then we have a step response of the RC low pass filter. So I think you must have must be knowing this type of signal also because you have covered basic electronics course in your you know in your first year. So this particular signal which you will ob, uh, you know you are seeing is a RC charging and this is also a particular kind of signal. And here you have a car bumper height after car strikes a speed bump. So when when a car strikes a speed bump then the type of response that the you know the springs the springs that uh, cars car has the response that is generated by that is given something like this so you can see initially it's a very high oscillation and then it suddenly settles down after a few minutes few seconds so this is again another uh, you know practical scenario where signals are observed the the this, this the fourth one is th through the light intensity of the switched lasers so in lasers you will find some sort of pulsed intensities of the signal. So these are also another form of signals. Here we have frequency shift keying FSK uh, again uh, related to uh, communication systems. So this is also a typical uh, you know, example of that. And then we have this encoding scheme which is given over here. It's again a communication uh, strategy that we are employing and uh, this, these are also another format of signals. But the important thing that has to be kept in mind is that we have a single time variable t which is independent and xt depends on that. And so this is the case where you have only single time t which is uh, only a single variable which is independent and it's time t. So it's not necessary that you, ha you should have only single uh, variable as independent. You can have two variables also as independent and in that case you can find this example see uh, this particular example is of uh, you know uh, of of uh, of a typical example uh, in case of uh, just a second so if you see here uh, this is a typical example of lena image which is uh, you know quite famous in the area of image processing so here if you see it's a it's also a signal in earlier case it was a one dimensional signal here this is a two dimensional signal but note that here the independent variables are you know you know y and x these are the independent variables here and not time so this has to be kept in mind that these type of signals are also available where you have you know two variables which are independent and they are x and y and they are not time they are spatial domain uh, signal uh, spatial domain variables so so if you have any questions here related to what signals are let me know otherwise uh, we will skip and move forward now okay. okay so if there are no questions so let us discuss what are systems so in systems if you observe um, we introduce the definition what what the definition was saying is that a system responds to a signal and produces a new signal so in this particular scenario where i am showing you one of the practical examples of signal is when two persons are talking with each other in this case if you observe that whatever is your whatever is in your mind is basically termed as a signal here so you, these are the this is the this is the you know communication that you are trying to communicate with the other person so whatever uh, whatever things that you have in your mind are termed as signal but what uh, and same is for the other person so th these are all signals but the important thing is when you speak and when the person hears that 
so that particular you know uh, thing is uh, termed as um, system because your ears are actually processing these signals which are actually going through that ear you know these uh, signals are going inside this ear of this particular person so whatever processing is going within these ears uh, of both the person are termed as system because it's outside and you don't know what's going inside that system because the human brain is so complex that you cannot understand the total behavior of a, a human brain so what we are saying is this is a complete black box this is a complete black box and the signal is feeded into this side and whatever is going inside this black box is uh, we don't care about it so what is important is what is coming out of this black box and is processed by the brain of the second person so so this is actually one of the practical examples of uh, system and the artificial examples of system we will discuss now so here you see we have you know different uh, scenarios where systems are involved the first system that we are trying to discuss is the communication system so what is happening in communication system in communication system if you see there are three different blocks so one is the transmitter block another one is a channel which we do not know what you know we cannot characterize this particular block because it's very complex but we try to form a small model of that that is a different story but uh, in total you cannot completely characterize this channel you know uh, you can approximate it but you cannot find the complete model of that and this is the receiver so all these three are actually acting as a system so in this particular situation uh, what you are doing is you are actually passing your message signal which is important to you and once you pass that message signal through this transmitter what will happen is transmitter has a role of increasing the power of this message signal so that is important what is the role of transmitter it actually increases the power of the message signal so so that is the important thing which is uh, you know uh, done to this message signal so it has increased the power of the message signal so that it can be transmitted over the channel so this transmitter is actually actually acting as a system which we can call as system 1 s1 now now comes the second system which is channel and we are terming it as s2 so you can see now here the role of channel is to degrade the transmitted signal so whatever transmitted signal that you will pass through this channel it will be degraded and once it is degraded it will be termed as received signal and the role of channel is to degrade the signal which is passed through it so so we are actually calling this as system s2 what is the role of receiver it's also another system which we are calling as s3 so here the role of s3 is to actually amplify the degraded signal so the signal that you receive here is very small so what you want to do is you want to increase and amplify it so that it can be easily audible to the other person so the role of receiver is this so these are the three systems which are actually cascaded together you know you must have seen in your you know signal system course uh, in your earlier earlier you know rerunning you must have seen that you have three different blocks which are connected together and you are analyzing it so this is the same thing over here you have three different blocks s1 s2 and s3 and combined together it's also forming one system which you call as s so so these are the systems which actually take input as a signal and transform it uh, in the way if that system actually in, in the way that system wants to do it so if transmitter has a role of increasing the power it will increase the power if the channel has a role of degrading the signal it will degrade the signal and if the receiver has a role of increasing the amplification of the signal that will be done through receiver similarly you have feedback control systems which you must have seen in your control system course i i'm not going into the details of it but you can see that this controller is acting as a system s1 plant is acting as a system s2 sensor is acting as a system s3 and what they are doing at together is to transform this reference input into a output so this is a control system feedback another example which is a practical example is you know is a mp3 music player system so here you can see all the blue boxes which are given here all these are systems like you know this is s1 this is s2 so all these are systems they are interconnected together 
all these are systems which are interconnected together and the lines which are running in between them are actually signals which are actually passing through these blocks and you can see that for each of these interfaced uh, you know blocks the output that you are getting over here see here we have a microphone jack so whatever output you will get from here is what is what is what is important for you this is the signal of prime interest same is uh, say, not output it's an input over here because you are speaking into it and same is for speaker this is what is important to you that is uh, that is uh, these are the signals from where you know input and output is going in and out and same here we have this antenna which actually takes input from the radio station so so all these signals will be processed within these blocks and then you can get the desired output so so this is also one of the example another example is uh, uh, for smartphone system so you can observe that how many system blocks are there within the smartphone and how many signals are routed within these blocks to get you the to get you to the to get you to this final stage here so this is this is a typical example of smartphone system where system and signals are interacting with each other any any questions you have in this particular thing can ask me okay so if you do not have any questions then we will move to the actual theory behind these signals so there are two types of uh, signals that we encounter one is the continuous signal another one is the discrete time signals so continuous signals are represented on the top as you can see over here these are the continuous signals here and and these are the discrete signals so by saying continuous means uh, it has a continuous value in the x y axis and the continuous value in the time axis also so this is actually the uh, uh, what you can say uh, characteristics of a continuous time signal in which the amplitude is continuous in uh, in, in x axis as well as the time as well as in the time axis which is the x axis whereas this type of signal which you are f uh, seeing over here is uh, is called as a discrete signal this is a discrete signal and the the property of the discrete signals are that it is dis it is discrete in time as well as in y axis so on on y axis if you see the uh, if you see the values of these uh, you know samples they are all discrete whereas in time also they are also discrete so you can see uh, we have divided this time into individual terms like you know t1 t2 so there is nothing in between these two time samples so it is completely zero at that time so so within the samples there is no there is no signal so that's why this is called as discrete samples and here also in the amplitude all you can observe that within uh, within these two range there is no there is no amplitude so it is discretized between 4000 and 5000 so this is actually the example of discrete signal so now we will see how we can convert the analog signal into a discrete signal so by saying analog signal means continuous time signal so these are also called as analog signals so typically it has to be you know uh, uh, this is another way of saying that it's a continuous signal so here you can see we have a analog signal which is continuous in time as well as in amplitude so there are um, so so how to convert it into a digital signal which is given over here on this side so there are two ways of doing it. there are there is you know first of all what you do is you do sampling actually by doing sampling what happens is in sampling what you are doing is you are actually creating a discrete time space so when you sample the signal you are taking discrete samples of this uh, particular signal in time so that process is basically called as sampling so this is what is shown over here so what you are doing you are actually uh, taking the discrete time uh, dis uh, discrete discrete steps on the time axis so whatever you get onto the left side is basically a time discrete signal and note that here the amplitude is continuous it is not discrete so it's a time discrete signal and why the amplitude is not discrete because you are not discretizing the amplitude you are only discretizing the time so that's why it's called a discrete 
time signal and the second thing is once you have uh, and the second concept is called as quantization so here you see uh, this is this process is called as sampling this left side that is it is actually used for discretizing the time and the if you want to discretize the amplitude and not the time so here in the second concept what we are doing is in case of quantization what we are doing is we are actually discretizing the amplitude in these specific levels so let us say you have these levels here so what we want to do is we want to actually uh, you know restrict our amplitude on these levels also and whatever amplitude is coming in between these levels like for example here whatever amplitude is coming in between these levels we will not take them we will make it we will not take them we will just remove it and it will be zero so that is uh, quantization in the amplitude and the response that you will get after doing that is basically this one so here you can see that all the amplitudes are quantized to a specific level and and but the time is continuous here if you observe that here the time is continuous it is not discrete so but what is quantization then quantization is basically the uh, um, you know quantizing the amplitude you are you are quantizing the amplitude to a specific level so that's why it is called as a quantized signal whereas on the left side what is sampling sampling is basically uh, taking discrete times and not to the amplitude you are not discretizing the amplitude you are only discretizing the time whereas in case of quantization you are discretizing the amplitude and not time so when you combine these two process together when you combine these two process together what you get at the output is digital signal so this is basically a digital signal which actually combines both of them so so this is basically you know if you have this signal in your hand and if you apply quantization on this signal then you will get this discrete time signal which is quantized as well as sampled and if you have this signal quantization signal and then you follow sampling on this then also you will get this same signal so so what is the uh, what is the uh, characteristics of a digital signal the characteristics of the digital signal is that both the time as well as the amplitude are quantized any questions here related to this particular thing? Hello. Yes. Sir, whenever we mention that the time is continuous, so we are talking about the topic sampling. Uh, see, the thing is, no, no, this is not, uh, can you rephrase your question again because I cannot understand what you are trying to say. Yes, yes, yes. So, I think that is the part of quantization. Like, uh, I think quantization is only amplitude and sampling is only time and the digital signal is combining the Yes, both yes, it's a combination of both of them. That is what I am saying here, right? What I am saying is, on the left side, you are doing only sampling, you are not doing quantization. So, whatever signal that you are getting on the left is, uh, is a signal, but you are not processing it. On the right side also, there is a in between signal which we are calling as a quantized signal and we are not processing it but when we combine both of them together you see here uh, what i have written like you know this is actually combination right uh, what i what i am trying to make you understand is what is actually sampling and what is actually quantization separately so that is what uh, uh, these figures are so if you are doing only sampling you are getting this if you are doing only quantization you are getting this but once you understand these two concepts so if you have this signal which is sampled and then when you quantize it you know you are doing combination of this both then you are getting a digital signal here in the same way if you have a quantized signal first that you have quantized time or you have quantized amplitude but then you have to do sampling to convert to this digital signal so these are so both are combined together to form a digital signal okay this is what is given here okay any other question okay so so this is the concept of how you are converting a continuous signal into a discrete signal so 
based on these things we have four different type of signals as you can see over here the four different type of signals are one is called as analog signal as i have told you so analog signals are analog in amplitude and continuous in time so you can see uh, the amplitude is continuous as well as time is continuous then we have digital digital signal but it is continuous in time note that we have digital signal but we can have digital signal which is continuous in time so here you can see that signals are digital in the sense that amplitudes are quantized but the time is time is continuous if you observe this carefully the time is continuous here so there is no discretization in the time but amplitudes are discretized you can see here amplitudes are discretized to a specific level that's why we are calling as digital continuous time another type of signal that is uh, uh, there is analog and discrete time so there are four combinations right analog and discrete time so so this is the third combination where you have you know amplitudes are analog if you see here amplitudes are all analog so there is no discretization of these amplitudes but the discretization of the time is happening so you can see at a specific level you are taking the time so this is actually discretization of the time so this is another type of signal that you observe which is analog and discrete time and the last one which we are interested in and in which we will be going for signals and systems is basically digital discrete time so these are the signals in which we will be focusing on and uh, these are digital in amplitude as you can see all of them are digital so they are they are on a specific level so we have discretized it and also in time domain they are discrete as you can see so these are the signals which we are calling as digital signals and these are the signals at in which we will be using them in our signals and systems course so these are the four different type of signals that we have okay so if you have any questions till now can ask otherwise i, I will move to the next slide okay so see now the important thing is in working with signals in working with signals we have one or both of the following goals in mind so when you work with signals you have some goals without that it's not possible that you will be doing something so so that goals are actually characterized in two different parts the first part is you can the first part is called as uh, you know signal analysis this is the first part and what is signal analysis you understand the characteristics of the signal you understand what is going on in this signal in terms of its behavior in time and in terms of the frequencies which we will which we will understand later on in the course but what you are trying to do here is you are actually understanding the characteristics of the signal in terms of the time as well as in terms of the frequencies so uh, a typical example of that is if you want to if you want to uh, recognize a voice of a male or a female so what you will do normally is you will do a frequency analysis of that and you will see that the male voice are typically you know uh, you know the, the the frequency content will be on a smaller scale like the frequencies will be not that big whereas in the case of females frequency content will be high so that type of analysis which you are doing to identify what is a male or a female voice is characterized in signal analysis so this is the one way of understanding the signals by doing analysis on that and the second part of that is to develop methods for creating signals with desired characteristics and this type of category is called as signal synthesis so you are actually synthesizing the signals you are coming up with your own new signal which is actually uh, which you want actually so for that case the particular example is a text to speech software so in this particular situation where you want to convert uh, you know uh, you, your speech into the text so what you are doing is you are actually you know providing that software your speech so that you know uh, so that uh, it can be converted into text or or vice versa so in 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 another way around you are providing a text as a signal so that it can be converted into a speech so based on the based on the requirement you are actually coming up with your own signals you are creating the signals so that type of 
situation is actually called as signal synthesis. So, in your signals and systems course, either you will be doing signal analysis or you will be doing signal synthesis. So, both of them will be uh, some way or the other you are doing either of these two. So, this is a broad way uh, uh, in understanding the goals uh, for this signals and systems. In the same way, we have two goals for these systems also, which is system analysis and system synthesis, same thing. But in case of system analysis, what you are doing? You are understanding the system, how it responds to a specific signal. So you try to understand that, suppose if this is a black box you have here, you have a black box here and you do not, and you do not know what this system is because you are not able to see what's going on inside. So what you will do is, uh, you will pass some signal to it and you will try to see what is the output that is coming from here. So, so this is what is basically system analysis. You are doing analysis of this system by passing a test signal and getting the output and checking what is actually this system trying to do with that signal. So for example, if you have studied the low pass filters, what that low pass filters are doing? It is passing the low frequencies of the signal and stopping the high frequencies. May, maybe, I don't know whether you have studied that particular uh, you know topic or not, but this normally is seen in basic electronics course. So, low pass filters are passing the low frequencies and stopping the high frequencies. So, this, so any, any black box which is trying to do that is termed as low pass filter and you can check that by passing high frequencies like this and what you will get at the output is a lower version of that. So, so in that way you can do system analysis. And system synthesis is basically, you know, you develop methods, you develop methods by constructing a system in such a way that it responds to a signal in a prescribed way. So you are trying to, you know, you, you are trying to come up with a system, you are trying to, uh, and now the system is not black box, you are trying to change the system or come up with a new system which will try to, uh, you know, enhance the, the signal in some in some way. For example, if you want to enhance the sound of a guitar, then what you will do is you will come up with a new guitar which will try to, no, 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 so not guitar, you will, you will come up with a black box, you, can, you, you will come up with an amplifier. What that amplifier will do, it will take signal, it will take input like this and it will output a bigger signal like this. So, it will amplify the signal. So, that type of uh, uh, that type of black box that you you will you know come up with now it will not be a black box now you have to design this system actually you have to come up with some elements which will try to amplify this small signal into a bigger signal so this type of probing inside this black box and you know coming up with the uh, and trying to design this uh, thing is called as system synthesis Okay, so any questions here related to analysis and synthesis? Okay, so once it is done, now we are moving towards the signals and systems thing. So, as you can see, we have divided the course into two parts. One is signal, another one is system. So, what we will do is we will understand the signals first. We will understand what, what modifications or what operations we can do on signals and then we will move to systems. So now for this particular content, we will be going on focusing on the signals part. So there are multiple operations that you can do on signals and the multiple operations can be, you know, I will explain each of them individually are termed as signal operations. So the first operation that we will discuss here in, in which we will do on signals is arithmetic operations. So what are arithmetic operations? you are actually trying to add a constant offset a to a signal xt so if you are adding something to the signal that is termed as arithmetic operations and uh, you know in this particular thing if you have a signal xt and if you add a onto it then what what you will get as a signal as an output is gt so this is basically a very simple arithmetic operation that you can do on a continuous time signal please note right now i am discussing continuous time signals then we will discuss the discrete time signals but for this particular lecture, we are doing continuous time signals. So here you have continuous time signal, you are adding a, adding a offset A to it. 
so this can be visualized here in terms of the signal so here you can see on the top we have a signal xt which is actually limited between x max and x min so now what you are trying to do you are trying to add a offset to this signal by plus a so if you try if you add plus a and you can see that the level of this signal will move up it will go up like this here you can see now the amplitude is x max plus a and the minimum amplitude is x min plus a <coughs> it has it, it has increased you know in the vertical direction it has moved up a, for and in the other case if a is less than 0 what will happen in that case your signal will move down so this can be seen from here it moves down so this is a typical example when you try to add a offset a to a signal xt and the same thing is like you know there is no point that you only add a offset a here you can also add a signal yt or uh, yt also here so in that situation when you try to add another signal yt instead of a then also it will come in the category of addition of two signals and now you can see here we have two signals here one is x1t another one is x2t and now we are trying to add these two signals so the addition of these two signals will look like this this is the addition of the two signals when you add two signals and you can observe that for a specific time interval t1 if you have this as the you know one of the input one of the one of the values of x1t and for that specific value of t1 you have another in another value x2t that when you add together will give you this value at this specific interval t1 so this is showing you a practical example of how two signals are added so that you will get a complex signal which looks like this on the bottom so now another operation that we have is multiplication operation this is the second uh, 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 operation that we are looking at and in this particular thing what we are doing is we are actually trying to come up with a signal gt which is b times xt so you are actually multiplying it with a constant gain factor b so if you do that the same thing you can observe here that when you do this uh, onto this this original signal which is over here so if if b is greater than 1 then what will happen that signal will be amplified you can see now the domain uh, the, the the amplitude is increased by bx max and bx min so you can see here the amplitude range is increased when you multiply with with b which is greater than 1 if you multiply it with b less than 1 you can see that signal is compressed in amplitude domain in amplitude it is compressed so this is multiplication operation and similarly it's not necessary that this particular b is has to be a constant it can be another signal x to t also and if this is x1 t and then you can have multiplication of the two signals and this is what is shown over here same same treatment that you have you know and this is a specific case of taking this time interval t1 if here also i am taking the same time interval t1 <coughs> so so when you multiply these two together you will get a multiplied signal and you can observe that on that same time t1 the value which is obtained here will be a multiplication of this and this <coughs> okay so once this is done then the third operation that we are looking at is time shifting operation this is a very important operation that we have in uh, in signals and systems so what is this a time shifting operation a time shifted version of this signal xt can be obtained when you actually uh, shift it by time td so what we are doing now we are actually shifting it by t minus td so once you do that once you do t instead of t you are replacing it by t minus td what happens you are actually shifting the signal <coughs> to the right or to the left so we, we will we will see both of these cases now so td please note td can be positive as well as negative so it can be either positive or it can be negative so let us discuss each of these details uh, you know cases separately so let us say if td is positive so if t is, td is positive your gt a new signal is becoming x as t minus td so this is your new signal whereas your earlier signal was xt 
this was your original signal but now when you shifted it by time td you are getting a new signal which we are calling as gt so the important thing is let us let us see this signal here this is your signal xt which is given and now we are focusing on a specific time interval t1 note that i am uh, you know this is your time t1 and i am specifically focusing on this particular instant where time t1 we have this value which is given over here so now what happens is uh, you are actually shifting this signal by t minus td which is now gt this is now your new thing so now this specific event which is occurring at time t1 this which i was discussing is indicated by x t1 this is a specific interval and this particular value is indicated by x t1 because at that time t1 you have this amplitude so that same event same event that is x of t1 will be observed in gt you want to observe that same event in gt then what what changes you have to make in gt so that you will get same uh, you know uh, observation which is there at time t1 in x so that can be done by substituting t as t1 plus td so you when you substitute t1 as t as t1 plus td what will happen here you, you when you substitute for this t as t1 plus td what you get is g of t1 plus td equal to in this t you will replace it by t1 plus td so this is t1 plus td and then you have minus td so here you have x of t1 so you can observe that a specific event which is occurring at time t1 which we were discussing here occurs in gt at time t1 plus td so it is enhanced in time you know it is moved in time it is shifted in time by an amount plus td this is very important so what you are doing now the same event x of t1 is observed in gt at time t1 plus td so this is what is shown over here so you can see that when you when you when you do this type of transformation the new gt will become this and you can see that same in same phenomena is occurring at this point but now at time t1 plus td it is uh, you know uh, you know translated in time by an amount plus td so if you have any signal which is like this then you can straight away draw the diagram by translating it by amount td to the right so this is basically a case where your td is positive in case when your td is negative and in that case what will happen in case when your td is negative this t minus td will now become t plus td and when t plus td it happens now the same event x t1 which we were discussing now will occur at t minus td you can substitute it here when you substitute t as t minus td at that location you will get x t1 event so that will happen at t minus td so this is you can see over here that in this particular thing the signal will move towards the left side and the instant where that particular event which is occurring in xt will occur here at t minus td so in this situation your signal will move towards the left side in earlier case signal moved towards the right side any any questions here related to this time shifting operation okay so now once this is done then we will go to time scaling what is time scaling a time scaled version of the signal is obtained when you do a gt which is x times at here a is a positive constant so you are actually trying to multiply the time by a and you are getting a new signal which is gt so in this in this situation event xt1 that same event which we were talking earlier that is xt1 will occur in gt at this interval so if you see if you replace t by t1 by a then you can observe that same event of xt1 to occur in g so that will happen when your time is compressed 
by time is scaled by t1 by a this has to be noted down that this event x t1 will occur when your time scale is reduced by a factor of a so here two cases are there one is when a is greater than one in case when a is greater than one what happens is your signal will be compressed version of xt conversely if a is less than one then your signal will be a expanded version of xt so this you can see from here so this particular event which we were talking about earlier will occur at t1 by a so as you can see when a is greater than 1 this is quite intuitive for you to understand that if a is 2 or 3 or 4 then this time t1 will be divided by t by 2 t by 3 or t by 4 so the whole signal which is over here is compressed in this small time whereas in case when a is less than 1 then you know that you know it is expanded because you are dividing by some value like 0 0.2 or 0 0.7 so in this case it will be you know 5 times t so your sign when your a is 0.2 then t by a will be 5 times t so you can see that earlier it was occurring as t1 now it will occur at 5 times t so, so the whole signal is expanded so when your a is less than 1 then expansion occurs when a is greater than 1 then compression occurs so this is basically compression and this is basically expansion of the signal okay so now the important thing is what happens when you do both of them like you know shifting and scaling together so as we have understood three different scenarios where we had amplitude scaling time scaling uh, and then we have uh, discussed uh, uh, you know time shifting so both of them we have uh, we have studied all of them we have studied so what happens if you have a combination of all of the all of these like you know for example all the three functions like amplitude scaling time scaling and shifting can be applied simultaneously over here you can see it's a it's a general expression where you have amplitude scaling you have time shifting and then you have time scaling all of them are together so let us see what will happen when we apply all the three together and see uh, uh, like how will you get gt out so for example if you have xt and if you want to get to gt then what you can do is first of all you do amplitude scaling so if you do amplitude scaling it will become a times xt because you are multiplying xt with an amplitude a so it is just amplitude scaling which we have discussed so it's easy the next thing that you can do is you can do this transformation which is the time scaling which is time is converted into t by b so if you do that then this will happen that is x of t by b will happen and then you can do time shifting which is t minus t naught in that case you have a of x of t minus t naught by b so the important thing is the order is important like this is not that important because it's a amplitude scaling so that doesn't matter but in terms of time scaling and time shifting this order is important so if you if you flip these two orders the output will become totally different so let us see if you flip these two orders like you if you move this here and move this side this side what will happen in this situation if you this is same because you are doing an amplitude scaling it becomes a of x of t but now when you do time shifting first then it will become a of x of t minus t naught and then when you do a time scaling that is t by b note that it will be t by b here and there will be no scaling on t naught because it's a constant and it's not uh, it's not a time of function it's not a function of time so uh, scaling will be done on time variable so it will be t by b so now you can see a new signal has come which is not equal to this signal these two signals are not equal so as i have noted down here these two signals which is the second approach that we have used and the first approach that we have used they are not equal they are only equal if you have these two constraints like if either b is one or if t is zero is zero then only these two are equal otherwise they are not equal so if if both of them are there whether 
if B and T naught both of them are there, then this is not equal to this. So you have to keep in mind that this order is important. That is you scale and then you do a time shift. Okay, so for today's class, I think it's over. So if you have any questions, let me know. We have still four minutes. Otherwise, uh, I will stop this lecture. And yeah, yeah. Right. So the characteristics become different. Like if B is less than one. Yes, yes. Does, uh, if B is less than one, then the signal will be compressed. Right? No, no, no. It will be expanded. Sir, but here the conversion is from T to T by B. No, see, ha. Huh. See, in terms of the signal, if you observe here, I have shown you right. If you see here, uh, if your B is what you are saying is. B, if, yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, because it's in denominator. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah if it is uh, less than B uh, and if B is in the denominator, then the signal will be compressed. Yeah. So, so what is your question? Is, is that was your question? Yes, sir. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, yeah, because it's in denominator. So, yeah. Any, any other question? Okay, so... So these are the transformations and we will see some other transformations also like it's not necessary that these orders are important which I am telling you here. These orders are specifically for this particular type of signal but if, if the signal is different then we, we, we can change the orders also. So we will discuss that in our next class. So if you do not have any questions now then we can stop this lecture. Thank you.